Today I want to take a look at Microsoft Dataverse and how we can use the Power Apps portal to synchronize data from Excel to a Dataverse table. So here we're looking at make.powerapps.com and on the left hand side you have an option called Dataflow. Now Dataflow is a fascinating new feature that Microsoft is offering in the Power Platform which allows us to automatically synchronize and import data. It's probably one of the strongest reasons for using more Dataverse tables and storing more of your primary data in the Dataverse because we have these advanced synchronization features that we can bring online with no programming code. No PowerShell, no scripting, simply connect your source and let it synchronize for insert, update, and delete. So I wanted to go through an example. Over here looking at OneDrive, what we're going to do is upload a sample workbook of Northwind. Here's some Northwind sample data. We have city, state, street address, phone number, different points of contact, and a lot of data that you'd see in many business applications. We want to take this Excel spreadsheet, put it into OneDrive, and then from that OneDrive Excel file, we want to populate a Dataverse table. Now I've uploaded our Excel workbook, Northwind XLSX, so we can open and view that we have all of the table data available in Excel online. So this is hosted online at a URL, and it is formatted in a way that has a table, that it's a named range, it has a table structure, it's got column headings, and kind of a predictable format that lets us you know, come in and do sorting, filtering, and interact with the workbook online. Now in Power Apps, what we can do is create a new data flow. Let's say start from blank. We'll call this Northwind, and we'll go ahead and click Create. Data flows allow users to extract, transform, and load data from a wide range of sources. So the idea here is to bring your external data into the Dataverse, bring it into the Power Platform, so that we can then leverage it with Power BI reports. Power Apps for Forms, Power Automate for Workflow, but we need to bring the data into the environment first. And here's a comprehensive menu of all kinds of different data sources that data flow will allow for, and Excel is our very first one. So we'll go ahead and pick that out, and we'll click on Browse OneDrive to select our workbook. Here we can see Northwind XLSX ready to go. We'll click Select. The connection credentials are fine to use by default, and we'll click Next down here in the corner. So we've picked out an Excel workbook hosted on OneDrive. We're giving it to the Dataflow wizard, and what comes back is really interesting. On the left-hand side, you have a navigation tree with three objects, Customer, Sheet 1, Sheet 2. And by clicking Customer, which is our named table, we're able to see all of the information on the right-hand side. And it's kind of subtle, but if you look at the column headings, this one says 123 for numeric. Job title says ABC for text. And some of them you know, would maybe have date range, a postal code has a 123, but it's inferring the data type by looking at the sample values, which is incredible. And we'll go ahead and click the button here for transform data. And this brings us into the Power Query Wizard, but this is the web-based version. So the same technology that you're used to in Power BI Desktop, the same thing that you use for transforming, formatting, splitting columns, search replace, all of those options that Power Query gives are available here in the web browser using Power Query on the web as part of the Dataflow Wizard. And with our data imported, what we can do is go ahead and click Next in the bottom right to continue, and this will create a Dataverse table with the same structure. Now, again, this is Power Query in the web, so all of your options here for transform, formatting, splitting, removing columns, removing rows, all of that's available if we need to shape the data. We'll go ahead and click Next to move forward. So with the rows and columns selected, we now have a prompt for load settings. If we want to load it to a new table or existing table in the Dataverse, and then how we want to map the columns and go ahead and name them. And from this screen, we have a couple of options with primary key mapping. So our original data, if you remember, has an ID column on the left-hand side with a number that gives us a unique value. So we do already have a primary key. By default, this is going to say auto-generated primary key. In our case, we want to select the one from our data set 
and bring that in. And also over here, we can check data types. You can see destination columns. And we can say delete rows that no longer exist in the output. So this, this is bi-directional, where we're syncing the data basically forward and back, that if a row were deleted, then we want to take it out of Dataverse. And we have to have a primary key to support that feature. We are going to say load to new table, because this is something that's not in the Dataverse today. And you can go ahead and provide a description below. With all those choices, we'll click Next. And it says this needs to delete, modify the definition of customer's query to include a key or disable. OK, we do have that. We have our key. So if you're facing the error message to modify the definition of the query to support deleting rows, what you may need to do is go back one to Power Query, find your primary key column, come over here to the Transform tab, and we have a button to mark as key. So now we can mark that column as our primary key to support the bidirectional delete. After clicking Next in the wizard, we have an option to either refresh manually or automatic. Let's go ahead and do automatic, and we'll tell it to refresh every five minutes. And we can do send a failure notification to the owner. And from here, we can go ahead and publish to create our data flow. And that's really it. It's amazingly simple, it, all wizard driven. There is a history list that shows uh, any of the prior executions. You do have a value of the last refresh and the next one. When you see the word refresh, think of run. That's when the data flow job will run. And you can do different things with uh, editing the incremental once it has run. This will uh, kind of show your history. You can also refresh manually. A couple of different options, but it's really simple. I mean, wizard-based, start from blank, go ahead and choose your data source, and then map out the schema. So as you're thinking about Microsoft Dataverse and what the Power Platform can do, start running some tests with these different sources. Bring a data flow that connects you to other online databases. You know, you could bring in a SharePoint list to your Dataverse table or an Excel workbook, XML, JSON, flat files. Bring more of those things into Dataverse and you'll find it easier to build your Power BI reports, easier to build Power apps, forms, and any of the things that Power Automate can offer with Workflow. I look at this as the funnel to get Dataverse populated so we can then use the features after. Thanks for watching.